now we're completely somewhere else. Um, we went to Tibet, and um, I, uh, I, had, I had previously spent a lot of time in India um, learning a Hindu meditation tradition, that, but I didn't take any pictures there outside of the ashram itself. But anyway, I have a great respect for Hindu and Buddhist uh, strands. I think Buddhism originated with Hinduism. Anyway, this is a Buddhist monk in a, in a monastery. It's called Tashi Lumpo Monastery in Tibet. And I, I have enormous respect for the Tibetan people, how, how cheerful and happy they are. And I, I assume it has something to do with their, their Buddhist foundation because they have really tough lives and a difficult political situation with the Dalai Lama gone and so forth. But the people, again, I, I, I love the, to, to just concentrate on the, the people. That's a, um, a shepherd, nomadic shepherd boy. One of our California photographers, Dorothea Lang, has a picture that's similar to that. It's this is the, their milk transport system. Or it could be yak milk, which I don't recommend. And this is a bunch of people crossing the beginnings of a river, um, some tourists involved. And they're just so happy and joyful. And the, I was in a different boat and just loved the idea of somebody in one boat photographing the other boat. This is the origin of one of the major rivers of India. Many of India's important rivers have their headwaters in Tibet. And this is a quote that, um, that I put in the book. I found it in Proust. And I thought it, it kind of summed up my, my experiences in an interesting way. So the, the last chapter in the book is quite short. It's just a kind of wrap up and it's a round up. If it's an end of my odyssey of 50 years uh, around the world and around in, inside of myself to some extent, the lens, you know, lens is transmit light both ways. So that's a nice metaphor. And the world comes in and goes the other way too. We impose our values and our forms on the world when we make a composition. We cut a slice out of time in the moment. We cut a slice out of uh, a moving scene. And that's a statement. What is inside the statement comes from a lot of times what's within us as much as it does from the scene. Anyway, this, I just used a, this photograph I took in, in Greece because it's the Odyssey because I like the photograph. It was nonspecific as to place as, as, the, as the opener for the last chapter. My eastward odyssey ended symbolically on a flight across the Pacific from India to San Francisco in 1982. Whereas Columbus had traveled west trying to reach the east, I had gone eastward in stages, a process that eventually returned me to the west. I had visited many peoples, many places. Looking beyond ta time and tribe, I found that a sense of the unseen behind the scene lies at the heart of many traditions. The things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal, says Second Corinthians. A feeling for the numinous pervades civilization and their arts. The highly rational Greeks used shimmering myths to dramatize Homer's voyages, to narrate their plays, to name their temples and their sculptures. Elaborate cosmologies framed the ancient civilizations of India, Egypt, Mesopotamia, Persia, China, Tibet. For the North American hunter-gatherer, as for the medieval Christian monk, nature was an endless reservoir of symbols Every civilization has its creation myth. I found the Hindu story compelling and repeatable. A big bang of energy devolves into matter. A spark of that primal energy remains accessible within everyone. 
The arts of our own time focus more on everyday life than on ancient gods. Science has transformed our relationships, our travels, our understandings. Today we are inspired less by tribal narratives, more by cross-cultural revelations. The poetry of the 13th century Afghan mystic Rumi sells hundreds of thousands of books worldwide. Our vocabularies may have changed, but our thirst for the unseen cannot be quenched. The world is far from flat. The physical environment is coming to be felt as sacred. The arts of the past century have been marked by varying degrees of abstraction. Sounds, shapes, patterns, forms, harmonies, textures, and colors are emphasized for their own sake. They are felt as analogs to emotional meaning and sometimes seen as universal building blocks. To all this, the young art of expressive photography adds its own palette of possibility. For instance, photographs special ability to address issues of time and spontaneity. Since the inception of the medium, many photographers have believed their work has the potential to go beyond naive realism, holding implications beyond the literal. Quote, a symbol expresses itself completely and points beyond itself, said Goethe in one translation. So, Uh, this, you know, in a, when you do a book, the, the, the end sheets are the part that wraps by the hard cover and into the, across the spine of the book. So this is a picture of my own hand that I took with a digital camera and I made the end sheets like that. So it became a personal statement. So I think that's, that's what I have to say. Thank you.